Yeah, it's funny you talked about the blinking because that's actually what I always come across. Uh, my name is Anders Olsson. I work for a company called Toby Technology and we build eye trackers that can measure with about this level of precision where on the screen you're looking. And we use that for gaze interaction I, as a way to interact with your computer. And typically when uh, anybody hears about this, the first question they always ask is, so you mean you can just look at the screen, look at exactly what you want to do. If you want to click, for example, then if you want to left click, you do that. If you want to right click, you of course do that. And if you want to double click, well, this is the natural way to do it. And in theory, you actually can use eye tracking that way. You know exactly where you're pointing and you can measure if the eyes are closed or not. But in practice, that's not at all what it's about. And I'll get back to what eye tracking can be used for in just a second. But let me just briefly tell you a little bit about the technology as such. A modern eye tracker is not quite into your uh, mobile device form factor yet, but a modern eye tracker in about a year or so will start appearing in the Ultrabook form factor where basically you have a situation where a user sits in front of her laptop as she would uh, in any normal situation. And then in that laptop, there's near infrared light that sends reflections off of the eyes. And then there's some sensors that can measure those reflections. And the result is that you know where on the screen you're looking and also where in space the eyes are located. And this is a very useful technique that's very much on the user's terms. And you can sit, move around freely as you sit in front of the screen without any problems. But it's not always been that way. If we go back a few tens of years in time, eye tracking and such was a very, very intrusive technology. You actually initially had to put lenses on the eyes, and the technology naturally never caught on at the time. And then after that, you had to uh, fixate your head in a chin rest and stand totally still to be able to track where the eyes are looking. About uh, 10 years ago, the technology evolved to a point uh, where you could uh, start moving your head around freely. And that's when eye control started catching on. But the technology was still very expensive. And it was only at the time then being used by people with, uh, uh, that, that are very severely physically impaired. People that have no other way of communicating would start placing eye trackers on their uh, wheelchairs for the purpose of being able to communicate. Just look at whatever word you want to say, and uh, the device will start speaking those words for you. In the last year or so, the technology has evolved to a point where it now makes sense and you can place eye trackers uh, in high-end consumer uh, solutions, in particular for more professional usages such as CAD, etc. And uh, that's a starting point where we're going to just see the technology rapidly moving into also uh, tablets and smartphones over time. Uh, Toby, the company I represent, is the world leader within this field, uh, dominates the field today. So, eye tracking in the context of natural user interfaces. What is eye tracking all about? Well, let me start off by talking about how natural interfaces have impacted and revolutionized uh, in other scenarios in the last couple of years. To start off with the uh, iPad and then the iPhone that came a couple of years ago, the, the whole concept of touch is really, of course, the major driver that made a whole wide range of things possible and made the iPad and then other smartphones and tablets uh, huge success. If you look at the TV scenario, a little bit later in 2010, uh, you had gestures that came along and made uh, Xbox Connect a huge success. And uh, that's another very powerful way to interact, but in a different scenario. It's very good when you're so far away that you can't touch something and you don't naturally have access to a keyboard or a mouse. Now, in between, there's la laptops and desktops. And there, there's a lot of talk about things evolving and the technology improving and uh, the way to interact being done in new ways. But in practice, we're still in a situation where we have the same keyboard and the same mouse that we've had for the last 25, uh, 30 years or so. And uh, that, however, is the situation where we will see gaze interaction really moving in uh, 
in the next year or so. And the reason it will do so is not so much the initial reason that I talked about that you can point just by blinking or anything like that. But what happens when a device and a screen knows what you're looking at is that the device can adapt to you. The computer uh, or the tablet starts to understand you in a way much, much, much more deep than if it doesn't know what you're looking at. Makes it possible also to sit back and relax or just do things more efficiently. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. One and the most trivial example of how eye tracking makes a lot of sense is just dimming of the screen. It's something we've been talking about for a, for a long time. Uh, if somebody looks at a screen, it makes sense that it's very bright and lit up. But if you're not, you're just wasting energy. And this has partly to do with energy consumption, but it also has to do with getting a direct response from your screen. If you look at a screen and it just lights up slightly more when you look at it, it's almost as if you establish eye contact. And that's one of the most fundamental ways of interacting. If I'm looking at you now and you look back, then I've established some kind of a contact. If I look at you and you're looking down at your mobile phone, then I know I'm not establishing contact. And the same way, if you're talking or if you're looking at a screen and it responds somehow immediately when you look at it, it just increases the way you can uh, feel that you're making contact with the screen. Also, you can just sit back and relax in a very natural way. If a screen knows where you're looking, uh, it can automatically pan or scroll for you. Start looking towards the bottom of the screen and the screen starts scrolling up. It's a very nice, relaxing experience to not always have to move your finger around or your hand. Similarly, if you want to zoom in to some point, you can do that in a completely effortless way. Just as this has been a very big success on smartphones, because it's natural and simple and intuitive, uh, being able to just immediately get, for example, in uh, Google Maps, anywhere you want in the world, just by starting off looking at the whole world and then just looking and drilling your way down to right where you want to be. It's a very powerful user experience. And the opposite also applies. You can speed things up. By knowing where you're looking, you can contextually just point very efficiently. Uh, task switching is easy. If you have a lot of information, you can have the screen adapt and just uh, immediately take you to the information you're uh, interested in, which is always the same information as you're looking at, and have that expand and go full screen for you. Games can change in a couple of different ways. One, just the magical experience of being able to uh, do things without uh, using your hands is kind of fun. I'll give you an example of that later if somebody wants to try. But another more subtle way that eye tracking makes sense is you can start establishing contact with characters in a game. If you're in the middle of a, some kind of an adventure game and you see some character and that character looks back at you as soon as you establish eye contact, it makes the game realistic beyond what gra improved graphics can ever do. Look at a little mouse, the mouse might get uh, afraid and start running away. Those type of things will start happening in games. So, one question that's important in this context, is then gaze interaction coming to smartphones and tablets? And looking a little bit about where the technology is at, uh, just right what can be done right now, uh, the simple answer is in some ways no. The technology as such is now at a point where you can bring it into uh, ultrabooks, smaller laptops, but it's not uh, at a stage where you can bring it into tablets or smartphones uh, right at this point in time. However, there are scenarios where also in tablet context, gaze interaction is very, very useful. This is the laptop and desktop scenario that I talked about in the middle, and, and the reason why gaze is powerful there is because you don't have access to touch. Now, what happens when you dock a tablet into a keyboard you get a similar situation. In theory, you can still touch the screen, but it can become quite tiresome after a while. And that's, uh, as we're going to see during the end of this year and early next year, a lot of screens, that's, uh, tablets that start being docked into keyboards, uh, that's a major drawback. It's, it's just too tiresome after a while if you spend hours on end uh, touching the screen to, to interact. And their gaze in combination with a the keyboard uh, in a docking situation is a, 
it's a beautiful combination uh, for interacting with, with your tablet. I also talked about this scenario, the fact that you can keep this screen uh, lit up. Now, that's a more basic scenario where you don't need very accurate uh, information at all. As long as you have approximate information where, where somebody is looking, that's sufficient. And uh, if all you need is that approximate information about where you're looking, then the technology is mature already now. And we see a very similar situation, for example, with uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 that they've released. They have a functionality there that they call Smart Stay, where they do just that very basic thing. If, as long as you're looking at uh, your screen, it never, ever dims down. It just always stays lit up. And that's been talked about to some extent in the press as something that's uh, extremely powerful, more powerful than iPhone's latest uh, UI thing with uh, Siri. So that pretty much sums it up. I don't know, should we do questions or should we do a fast demo? Demo. demo. Does anybody want to try just a simple way you can use eye tracking? So over here. So this is a laptop. It's an earlier stage prototype, so a little bit oversized. If you just sit down here, I'll walk you through the process. So what you'd need to do for an eye tracker to work, is this is just a one-time process where you need to calibrate. So you need to follow that dot with your eye. Once you've done that, once you don't ever have to do it again. So now when this is done, the screen, the de device knows with this level of precision all the time where on the screen you're looking. And we're just going to have you play a very simple game here. So this is just a classic game from the, I think, late 70s, early 80s, Asteroids. But instead of interacting with uh, your hands or a joystick, you just look at the asteroids. And the speed at which you can do this is just uh, uh, several times faster than you would ever be able to do it with a joystick, a mouse, or even touch, because it's just instantaneous. The eyes are built to look. And they do it in uh, just 20 to 30 milliseconds. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> That's the end. And then here, <laughs> well done. Here is another just very trivial example. If you look towards that screen, for example, um, if you look over there, then you will see that appears for you. And then as you're reading the text, if you go back to the text, as, as you're reading it, it will automatically adopt for you. Just very, very slowly scroll. So if you're reading through a page, uh, that user experience can be somewhat like, enhanced by eye tracking. Yeah. Very good.